Welcome to the talk uh, about uh, this talk about Drupal CMS, the content management system, uh, what it does and how to use it. Uh, my name is Merel. Uh, I thought it would be nice to introduce myself before I start this lecture. Um, so I tried to summarize my personality in one page. It's actually really difficult. Like try it. It's it's it's, it's not possible. So I, you get in three today, <laughs> three pages, and then we'll start talking about Drupal. Um, so I tried to start off with the, a picture that summarizes me the best. And I think I found it. It's this one. Um, <laughs> so I've always been um, kind of a goofy person. I, I like to make fun of, of every of life, basically. Don't let's not take things too lightly. It's the way to have fun. I'm also kind of a nerd. Uh, I like all kinds of nerdy stuff, like uh, painting minis behind me. You can see my desk with paints over there. Um, I also love nature. I like taking walks in nature. I am an amateur chef. And some people would even call me uh, talented. And this hobby will come back later in this presentation. You love my outlook. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, but I'm also a technical enthusiast and I've been that way since a very young age. And you can see in this picture uh, with my dad, this, I was literally raised with technical <laughs> enthusiasm. And it's, it has something to do with that he is um, kind of an uh, innovator on the electrical circuit board field. Um, so that's kind of where it came from for me. I'm also a biologist by degree. I've always liked biology and it was my best exam course in school. Um, so I decided to follow that, that talent and I finished a bachelor in biology. So, um, but during, during the time that I was, um, uh, doing that bachelor, I fell in love. And um, it was during a vacation job as a, in the web development in IT. I, I loved it so much. When it ended, I just, I didn't want to go back to anything else. I just wanted to make this my occupation. And, um, but I had no IT schooling or experience whatsoever. So I decided to start my own company um, and create my own experience. And that worked. Here you see why that I'm a developer by heart. I even keep on typing when someone wraps paper around my chair. <laughs> uh, so it worked to, to create my own company. And now I'm actually working in the field. Enough about me. Uh, let's get to the subject you all came to see. Does every, everyone know uh, what a CMS is? Like, I don't know. Hi, I'm Maureen. How are you? <laughs> um, I will explain what a CMS is for the people who might not know. So a content management system, that's what CMS stands for, uh, is a way to build a website and structure your data in it so that you can do all kinds of cool web development tricks with it. And uh, more about that later in the presentation. So how about the Drupal part? Has, has anyone heard about Drupal? You probably, you might have, you might have heard about Drupal. Uh, you might have also heard that it has a very high learning curve, like a steep learning curve. It's hard to get into. And in a world where the market of IT experts is already slim, that is not a good quality. Like you don't want that. You, people are already short in the IT world. And now you are known for having a program that is very hard to get into. So. We wanted, the community wanted to change that. Um, and it's kind of funny when you realize that this is where I decided to start my web development journey, because it's like, I wanted to make things hard on myself, <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay. Maureen has heard about Drupal too. Cool. Um, there's a silver lining to this story, however. And that brings me to the main message I would like to convey today which is Drupal 8 is for everyone. You see that I put eight plus in the title and that's because um, starting with Drupal 8, it has become a lot better and like features always carry over to the future 
version. So nine will have everything eight already has. So that's why I put eight plus. Nine has just actually been released. Um, and Drupal is an open source software. Um, it's it's shaped, shaped and maintained by the communi community that uses it. And if you don't know exactly what open source means, I, I mean, I found it hard to understand exactly how that worked when I got into it first. So I'm going to give a short example. Um, have you ever used a piece of software and thought, wow, if they just changed this and that, or if they just added this, it would be so much better. Well, in open source, you have that power. Um, you can make an issue online and write down whatever you think should change and why. And it's kind of a meeting place for other people, like-minded people that agree with you that this should be changed. And even though, like, if you can't code at all, that's no problem. You, if you can read and write, you can create an issue. And when you create an issue, people that can code will probably also end up there. And these people will create a first draft of the change that you thought of um, and ideally um, perfect it together. And when they're done, they can ask the project maintainer, in this case, the Drupal Association, to um, push their changes to the actual product. So to actually change Drupal in this case. And this makes it a very powerful tool because you're, you're basically using your entire user base to test your software and to make it better at the same time. You don't need, your, I mean, you, you, you do need maintainers, but you don't need as many people in your company to, to do this because people are doing it for free, basically. Um, so it's been, it's been made more accessible. Um, Drupal, the Drupal community has worked very, very hard to um, lower the learning curve of Drupal. And I think they succeeded. They've made it more accessible by adding a demo version. So if you install Drupal out of the box, you can choose to install the demo version and you will already have some contact to practice and play around with, which makes it easier to learn. And like, Drupal has always had out of the box usability, which means that if you install it, you can use it right away. Um, and it's always been easy to customize your website because it's a content management system with a nice interface in which you can put your, your contents or your pages. Um, and, but the layout, the layout has become a bit like a big, it, it has become, become very much improved because it has been it, it has become way more intuitively customizable. With that, I mean, um, in Drupal 7 and lower, you had to adjust your code in order to change the position of, let's say, your menu. And like you could very generally place it right or left or up. But now you can actually say, okay, I want three columns instead of two. And I want this to be above that. And you can make your own areas that you can put your content in everywhere. This is new in Drupal and I really like it. I've never seen something this versatile in CMS before. Like if someone has seen the versatility in layout that Drupal 8 or up has in another CMS, I'd like to hear from you because <laughs> um, I don't think there's any CMSs out there that do it so well. And lastly, uh, the reason why it's also easy, easy to customize, it's not only easy to customize for site builders and people that don't code, it's also easy to customize for coders. Um, that's because it's a framework. It has always been that way. Uh, it's basically a toolbox and more about that later. So now I would like to show you a bit of, you know, how to use it. Um, I literally started using this at the start of this month. So for me, this was quite new. The only thing I knew was kind of globally how Drupal works, but not Drupal 8. So let's, um, discover together how you can change 
the demo a bit up so we can learn from it. The first step would be to install Drupal, right? So because that process takes pretty long, I made a video that we can watch together. It is online, just in case this sharing doesn't work. <laughs> Go on here. Let me show the Chrome screen. Okay, this is where we left off. Does it work? Yeah, it, well, it works for me. Does it work for you? Okay, good. Um, so, you see uh, the demo content here. Um, you see a few recipes. Every recipe is basically a page. So if you click something like the fiery chili sauce, view recipe, you will see the recipe. This is the page of that recipe. Uh, in Drupal, this is called a node. So a page is a node. And uh, there's multiple types of node nodes. And this node happens to be a node of type recipe. So um, let's see if we can make a new recipe in here to learn from. Uh, let's go to content and add content. Uh, recipe. It's very small with you guys. I'm sorry about that. Let's see if I can blow that up. There. Oh, that's a bit too big. Yeah. Easier to see this way. Okay. So we need to give it a name. Of mushroom puffs. Takes about 90 minutes to make. 20 minutes to cook. Takes 56 servings. I know that's a lot. I tried this before. <laughs> um, okay category like so there's there's a few categories here but i'm gonna go with snacks and you can see oh you can see that it's i only type three words and it just fills the rest so anything it finds with these letters in it will show so it's really easy uh, and then you can add some tags to make it easier to find so this recipe is vegetarian and it has yeah okay, you have to click it and it has mush Rooms. I forgot the comma. Mush. Mushrooms. There you go. So, um, I think there's also an appetizers. There you go. Um, I checked before which ones are available. So, um, it's asking us for a picture because what's a recipe without a picture, right? Uh, oh, this looks a bit weird because we've blown up the screen. There you go. I've already uploaded my picture, but I'll do it again so you can see what that's like. Uh, here you go. Well, it's, it's Dutch. I'm sorry. It says uh, pick file. <laughs> um, we have here mushroom puffs. Alternate or alternative text means if you mouse over it, what will it say? Very like a lot of imagination in this one. Um, you can even make an alias URL, where if you go there, you see only the image. We don't need that today. Let's save it. And insert it. Okay. Now it's asking us for the summary, which will be um, kind of like uh, in, the, in the main page you, you saw. Let's see if I can show that. because I have to switch tabs. <laughs> okay. Well, in the main page, you saw um, a small text beneath some recipes. Um, that's kind of what this is, like a quick, quick summary. Yeah, well, it says it's summary. So let's say uh, a great party snack or for a rainy day. Now, ingredients, mushrooms. I think I actually have the recipe here. You get, you get the gist of this. Um, I'd like to point out that this is the exact recipe <laughs> that I'm using. Um, oh, you can see that because I'm switching tabs. Hold on. 
I will post as inspired by and then the link. There you go. If people want to look up the recipe, that's where it is. Always state your sources and give the credit where credit is due. Okay. These are the instructions. Just copy them. It's faster. Now, we click save. It sounds like we're done. And there you go. It looks pretty nice, I think. Especially these things. The instructions. Okay, let's uh, go to the main page and see what it looks like if we see our recipe. Huh. I don't see it. Do you see it? Why would that be? Well, Drupal 8, Dr Drupal 8 has an extra thing hidden in it. Because right now, um, it's a draft. Which means it's not shown yet. You have to publish it first. They put this in because in a lot of companies, people that write articles or recipes or any kind of content are not the people that edit the final product. So um, that, um, not edit, they, um, like the editor will say if it's correct, if it's good, if it's good enough to be published. So right now I'm gonna play editor and say, change to published and apply. And lo and behold, if we look at our main page, right there, do you see it? Oh, it's a bit slow. There we go. There it is. Our recipe. It's on the main page now. So you see that really quickly, we just made a page out of, we didn't code at all. It didn't, it didn't take a lot of time. It was really, really easy. Now, um, what if we wanted to add something to this? I mean, honestly, personally, I'm, I'm missing a calorie field. So let's try and make one. I'll go to structure, content types. Uh, this is a recipe, so we're going to manage the fields of this recipe. We're going to add a field for the calories. Mm. So it's a text. Text, text, text. Like that. And label is calories. It's asking a ma maximum length, doesn't really matter. Don't make it too short, obviously. And it's asking how many times we can actually put it in the recipe. Well, one recipe has one amount of calories, the calories so we're gonna go for one. Um, okay, let's go to our node and see if we can change the calories. I mean, were we done? Hold on, save settings, very important to save. Yeah, there we go. We saved the settings. Now let's go to our recipe and see if we can add some calories. Edit. Hmm. There's no field for calories, is there? Why is that? Well, turns out Drupal wants to know first where you want to show this field. So we're gonna go back to our content type recipes, manage the fields, and we're gonna say manage display. Um, now there's multiple kinds of displays. We were looking at a card. That's, I know this because, no, sorry. This is the, what we just saw was the full content, excuse me. The card is what you see in the overview. Uh, the recipe itself is full content. Um, manage layout means this is the layout builder that I talked about before. So in here, you can add sections anywhere or make other sections bigger or configure them. Um, right now, this is where I want to add my 
calorie block. So I click add block. I say calories. And it already knows what I want because I have already made this field. Uh, put the, the label uh, in line because the other ones also have first the label and then the value. I think I want, I want to display the title, obviously. Add block. So and I, he, it now put it down here. I would actually like it to be up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to like put this up, up, up. I know it's possible. Okay, hold on. Move. There we go. We're going to move it. This is easier. To, uh, let's see. I want it above the recipe category. That's a nice place. Move. And there you go. It's now up here with no coding at all. Why is it showing that? <laughs> I think it's just making up text for me. Okay, so let's go back to our recipe and see if we can now add some calories. There we go. Field, it just put the field below everything else. Um, I happen to know it's 56 calories per portion. I'm gonna save this field. And there we go. Ah. <laughs> That's funny. If you do something live, it always goes wrong. It's supposed to be up here. Maybe I didn't save anything. Maybe I didn't save it. <sighs> funny, because I practiced this beforehand. I, I'm not just pulling this <laughs> out of my hat. <laughs> I practiced. Let's see what's wrong. Ah, uh, yeah. Safe layout. Don't think I saved it. There we go. Didn't save the layout. That was the problem. Right here. Okay. So, uh, we have 10 minutes left. I'm going to go try and do the last thing that I wanted to show you, which is the um, overview. So, we can, we can edit it. So, this view gives us all of the recipes, right? What if we wanted a view with only the snacks? There's a thing in Drupal called um, taxonomy. It's a way to structure your data hier hierarchically, um, which means that you can put categories, you can make categories, but you can also put them as children of each other. So there's snacks and there's gluten-free snacks. Can you see it yet? It's a bit slow. It's a different tab. Aha. I hate that it doesn't show all the tabs. There we go. If you go to structure, taxonomy, and then uh, recipe category, you can see snacks and gluten-free snacks. You can see that this is the gluten-free is a child of snacks. You can make more children this way. We only want to have a view that shows snacks. So we're going to go to structure views because the overview is a view. And um, we can say, uh, where is it? Recipes. Okay. So we want to, I want to copy this. I just want to make this, but tweak it a bit and make it better. So let's say snacks. Okay. That's a new name. I gave it a new name. Okay. So what you see here is that it's filtering on uh, a few a few criteria. It needs to be published in order for it to be shown. You can see the preview here, by the way, below. It needs to be published. Um, the content type needs to be recipe. And the uh, translation, it has to be translatable. 
Well, we're going to add some one. We're going to add um, a taxonomy type. So we're going to say that it needs to be um, a recipe a taxonomy. Where is it? Right. Yeah, recipe category. There we go. That's what I wanted. So um, we apply, and it's one of uh, snacks. But we're now basically choosing which category we want to show. Now, it only shows everything that is category snacks. Um, we are not done yet, because it says here, you have unsaved changes. If you do not save now, you will lose your changes. So I'm going to save. Save as time and save right now. We have five more minutes. I'm aware of the time. Oh, two minutes. That's short. I thought I had 45 minutes. OK. Anyway, last thing, we want to look at the, at the page. Uh, I'm going to give it a path called Recipes Snacks. And then save it, of course. Nah, come on. Save it, save it, save it. Go to Drupal 8 Recipes Snacks. And there you go. It's not found. <laughs> Wait, I have one too many E's. There we go. Now we have our recipes that are only snacks in a page. And we it only took us like 10 minutes to do it. So thank you, um, everyone, for coming. I had more, but we don't have more time. Um, it is perfect to play around with, isn't it, Maria? Someone had one question about the um, uh, Drupal Headless. That is that is a thing. I know it's a thing. Like there's there's been a lot of talk about it in the Drupal community. You're welcome, uh, Heather. Um, so I know it's a thing. I've never worked with it, so I have I have no I can't tell you anything about it. I just know it exists. So um, maybe do some research um, on that question. Is it different from Drupal? Or if someone else knows, type it in the chat because I know this chat will go on for about like five minutes or so. So. We can try to learn from each other. If you want to um, look at these slides, they are, um, you can see them on uh, tiny, tinyurl.com slash Drupal 8 presentation. Let me see if I can uh, show you the link. Oh, I can just put it in the chat. That's better. If you want to see the slides, or the, the full slides with everything, <laughs> you can look at look it up right there. Okay, uh, Alejandra, I will uh, I will contact you uh, in LinkedIn. Uh, my LinkedIn should I did give it to people, <laughs> so it should be to able to find it somewhere. I think it's on my speaker profile. So if you're curious for my LinkedIn, you can see it there. Celebrate Drupal! Yay! I've never seen that website before. That's cool. Yeah, Drupal 9 just dropped, huh? OK, well, uh, thanks for coming. I hope it was OK. I haven't presented much in my life. So <laughs> like, I've presented stuff, but not in front of a computer with nobody watching, like nobody to respond to. <laughs> so um, and also never on an event. So this is my first time. You are very welcome. I, uh, I hope it was somewhat enjoyable slash educative. And please remember, Drupal 8 is for everyone. Really, it is. Like, spread the message, please. It has really gotten better. OK, well, um, since there seem to not be any questions, I'm going to log off. I posted my LinkedIn in the chat if you want to connect. 
thank you all for watching if you're still here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you around, maybe at some Drupal events. Um, okay. Mm -hmm.